In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up taxes in WooCommerce and all the ins and outs of doing that. You may have to contact an accountant to get all the tax information for all the different districts you're selling in, or there's also an alternative, an add-on you can get that is a premium add-on, but makes your life a whole lot easier, and you may avoid high bills at your account if you use the other add-on, possibly. Anyway, we're getting started right now. What's up guys, welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If you're new here and you like WordPress and you wanna learn more about it, you wanna learn WordPress tips and tricks and all the cool stuff you can do with it, click the subscribe button, then click the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And if you like deals, I've negotiated a killer discount with InMotion Hosting, up to 57% off their plans. Not every plan has a big of a discount, but every plan is discounted. So if you're looking for new hosting for yourself or for a client, check out the description down below. There's a link there. I'll tell you all about how to cash in on that discount. With that out of the way, let's head in the screen capture and start doing some WordPress. So if you've spent any time at all on this planet, you know that taxes are a sticky issue and they're always changing. It's tough to keep up with. So when you're setting up your WooCommerce taxes, it's kind of a serious thing. And I recommend you get the advice from an accountant, a professional accountant knows what they're doing and can help you set up these settings. I'm gonna show you what all these settings are, but a lot of the questions you have to answer when setting this up, I can't advise you on those. Maybe you can if you really understand your taxes in your area, but best is to get the advice of a professional accountant. And I know that would cost a few bucks to do, but it's better to have that set up properly in the beginning than let's say your store goes gangbuster and you start making a bunch of cash, but you're not doing your taxes properly. Then the government comes after you and wants their taxes, wants their back taxes, which can hurt you a lot, frankly. So I recommend you get some advice from someone who knows what they're doing. And I'm also gonna show you at the end of this video or somewhere in this video, a resource that can greatly streamline your WooCommerce taxes and maybe even let you avoid seeing an accountant. We'll get to that in a minute. But first, to set your taxes, we go to the WooCommerce plugin, go to settings, then we click on the tax tab. And on this first page, the tax options, this is where we set all the global standard stuff, all the important questions we have to answer about taxes are all set here. The choices you see here are the default ones set by the plugin. They're the most common ones. So sometimes just keeping all the defaults works just fine, but you definitely wanna go through and check each one. Click on this question mark or hover over it for a further explanation on what this is. But let's go through them one by one. Prices entered with tax, yes or no? So on, the, on your store, when there's an item and it says $20, does that $20 include the tax? Yes or no? You pick the answer here. Calculate based on customer shipping dress, which is the most common. Now, generally, you don't have to pay sales taxes if items are sent to countries outside of where you live, but sometimes there are specific tax treaties between your countries where you submit tax on behalf of the other country in your country, and it gets a little crazy. So again, an accountant or the resource I'm gonna show you in just a minute, but this is most commonly based on customer shipping address. You could change it to customer billing address or shop base address, which is the address of your shop. Most commonly, customer shipping address is what that is. Shipping tax class, this is whether or not you apply taxes to the shipping. So you can have it based on the card items, you can have it standard, reduced rate, or zero rate, which are settings that we set on the next tabs up here. So which one of these you choose is tricky. This is one of those things where you get the advice of a certified professional. Rounding, do we round the taxes up or down? I don't know, depends on where you live. Contact a professional. The, the safest bet is that you round them up because the government is never gonna complain about you sending them a few pennies more, but they will complain about you sending them a few pennies less. So rounding up is often the best way to go, but a certified professional would know the correct answer to that question for your area. Additional tax classes, you can have them in here. Reduced rate zero rate, these are defaults. These are commonly used. Doesn't mean you have to use them in your store. They're just there. Display the prices in the shop, excluding tax or including tax. Most commonly you do it excluding tax. So the shirt's $20, it shows $20 on the listing. Then when they go to checkout in the cart, it will show $20 for the shirt plus whatever tax rate applies to their area. Display prices during cart and checkout, excluding taxes. Usually we do it here, excluding taxes, because we want them as line items. 
So if you have a $20 shirt, that shirt is still shown as $20 in the cart. If you have including tax, it's now shown as a sum of $20 plus the taxes, which can be confusing. So keep this as excluding tax. Price display suffix, this is most often for if taxes are included. So you'd say including sales tax or VAT if you're in Europe or GST or even PST if you're in Canada, one of those two. So you put in there, if you're including taxes in the totals, what those are. The display totals, I set it to itemized. If you have a single total, that means again, the taxes are lumped in with your item totals and you can't tell the difference which is which. If you have itemized, you see the tax totals for every item in the store, more transparency for the customer, which means more trust. So whenever you have those settings set up as you want them, click on save changes. And as you can tell just by going through those quickly, there are some questions that you, that you probably can't answer off the top of your head that you'd want to see a professional for. Once you've set that up, standard tax rates can be set up here in this button or this tab. This is where we enter standard tax rates for places around the world. So if we click on insert row, we can enter a country code. Let's call it USA or just US. Pick it from the drop down. State code, let's call it New York. Postal code, I don't know any postal codes in New York. I know 90210 from my childhood, that's over in California. Close enough, uh, city, New York. Rate, I don't know what the tax rate is there. 10%. Tax name, depends on what the tax is. So maybe that's sales tax. So we'll give it sales tax. Compound, if this box is checked, it means that this 10% tax will be applied on the total of all the other taxes, which is not very common. Usually tax is applied on the total of items in your cart, not based on what the total is after taxes. So this is not commonly checked. Again, depends on where you're from, where this is being sent to. Check this box if you want to apply the tax to shipping or not. Once you have that row in there, you can add more rows, click on insert row to add another one. Click on save changes when you're done. As you probably guessed, this would have to be done for all the places you're shipping to. You can limit where you ship to inside WooCommerce. So maybe you wanna ship only to the United States, which makes this a little bit easier. But there's even problems there. There's, there's places like California, where you have a tax rate for all of California. But then within California, you have areas that have different tax rates which gets super confusing. If you happen to have a CSV file that contains all these things, you can import the CSV here, which makes this a lot easier. You can also export that CSV to move to a different site if you want to. And the reduced tax rates are the exact same thing. You would go through the same process to add taxes there. Zero rates, also the same thing. Now, just setting these taxes up is a beast. There is a plugin for WooCommerce called TaxJar that can help a lot. It's a third party plugin. This is on the WooCommerce site. I'm not gonna give you a link to this one, but if you click on sign up, it's a, it's a paid for plugin, but I'll tell you what, removing this headache from your life, it, it's worth the few dollars you pay for this plugin. I'll, I'll put a link to this page in the description. If we go to the pricing, it's a low monthly fee, especially for lower transaction amounts, but it does all the tax calculation for you based on what your settings are. So if you have your settings in here under tax options as, wait for it, as based on the customer shipping address, tax jar keeps all of that up to date. So if, if the tax is changed in an area, that's fine. You don't have to do any changes yourself. Tax jar does it. I encourage you if you have a WooCommerce site of any size and, or you want to have one of any size, Check out TaxJar because this is one of those pains in your side, this tax calculation stuff that can come back to haunt you. And it's just a huge time drain, even if you're just selling within, in your own country. But if you're selling globally, I mean, it, it, it gets crazy. So click on the link in the description, check out TaxJar if you have any kind of desire to have an e-commerce site with WooCommerce, because this will save you tons of time. And using this even helps you avoid contacting an accountant because TaxJar takes care of all the taxes in all the different areas and all the different variables of what goes on and makes sure that everything is going properly. So again, click on the link in the description down below. 
check out this plugin. It is a paid plugin, but it's well worth it. So that's how easy it is. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, click subscribe, then click the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. Check out the half off or more than half off for some plans hosting offer in the description down below or on the card that popped up. And next up is clicking one of these videos that popped up on the right hand side so you get even better at WordPress. And until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.